Liturgy. I'm your host, Flint Anderson. Thank you for joining us today and every Thursday as we drop new episodes. If you don't like and subscribe to our podcast, then please do so. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications as we drop shorts and bonus episodes from time to time as well. And that's what keeps this train rolling. If you don't follow me on social media, go out and find me either under Flint Rock with a PH or the Old Man Energy, either one. I post different content daily on all three platforms. So wanted to talk today about what happened this weekend and just some of the responses to it and some of the ways that we should deal with tragedy like this. I'm referring to the attempted assassination on Saturday of a presidential candidate, former President Trump. Now, regardless of your politics, regardless of how you feel about him as a person, how you feel about everybody else out there running, we can't, we lose perspective of reality sometimes because we get so buried in our own opinions and that turns into anger and is only fueled by so many different things in our lives. The echo chambers that social media can turn into, showing us only what we agree with, not what we disagree with. And a lot of us out there aren't equipped with the skills we need to, one, handle a tragedy of this magnitude, but two, be able to get along with somebody that we disagree with. And before I get into the events this weekend that created this situation and responses to it, because I'm upset about that and I'm angry about several people's responses. I'm angry that it happened in the first place. But one thing that we fail to address just in general is the fact that we don't have to hate each other, guys. We don't have to be polarized because people have differences of opinions. We can think somebody's wrong and still get along with them. Or if you don't get along with them, at least you don't have to hate them. We've lost that. We've lost that as a country, and we've lost that sometimes as a community. It's just, dude, if somebody's radically different from us, instead of accepting them, you don't have to accept their life or their philosophy or anything else, but they're human. So instead of accepting them or just at the very least ignoring them and letting them go on and live their lives, we think we're supposed to hate them. We think we're supposed to actively go out there and pursue action against them because they don't agree with us. This is a terrible mob mentality. And any of you that have read any book about this, and I can talk about 1984, we can talk about Animal Farm, we can talk about Lord of the Flies. There's tons of literature written on this. It only serves to divide us instead of unite us, instead of realizing that your neighbor's not somebody to hate. Your neighbor's not somebody that you should look down upon or that you should judge or just get out there and talk to them. This was especially prevalent during COVID when we were all stuck at home. There wasn't much to do. So people started talking to their neighbors and lo and behold, they realized that life wasn't quite as terrible. The neighbors weren't quite as terrible as we thought they were, that all of a sudden people are just people. But that really doesn't satisfy any kind of agenda. And whether you're a conspiracy theorist or not, agenda can be as simple as marketing tactics. And a lot of the political campaigns are run based on marketing tactics because the vote is the purchase for whatever reason. People don't want to look at it that way. And marketing and advertising sell everything, whether it's a purchase, whether it's a vote, whether it is participation, whether it's an opinion. They're designed and there's extensive and millions and millions of dollars and hours of research designed to manipulate you and get you to do and say what these people want you to do and say. And I'm just as susceptible to it as anybody else. If you're aware of it, it's easier to fight. It's easier to stand up and resist it. But if you're not aware of it, it's impossible to resist because there are psychological factors involved here. Emotions are moved and emotions are triggered. So that being said, be aware of what's going on around you. Be aware of what's going on in your community. Be aware of what's going on in your life and with your family. And when things like this that are terrifying happen and that are polarizing happen, remember, this is not just adults dealing with this. Children are inundated with this too. They see it on social media. They hear parents talking about it. And oftentimes they're pushed to the side and said, you know, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. But they're still scared. They know something big is going on. And they know that their parents are upset about it. So it's important to talk to your children. I did a whole other episode on that specifically. Go look that up. If you have trouble talking to your young children, your teenagers are in there. I've talked about that specifically. But remember, it's okay to be angry, but it's not okay to lash out. And you lash out at people or 
say mean and terrible things. And I'm going to tell you right now that what, what happened was a tragedy, but it really highlighted just the mentality of a lot of people and a lot of people that were, were, and I put that strongly, were my followers, posted mean, hateful things like, well, too bad he missed or any other number of hateful speech like that. Well, maybe they should have bought a, got a better shooter or this or that, man. You can eliminate yourself from any of my following anywhere if you, that is your opinion. Because ultimately, no matter what your politics are, that's not okay to wish that somebody were dead or to wish that somebody were killed. That, that's it's not okay. And if anybody that thinks that's okay, then where, where are you coming from? What if it was you? What if it was your parent that somebody else hated that much that they wanted to take their life? And then bragged about it being a good idea or that it was here. There, there's tragedy in every situation like this. It's not a good thing. It's not something to be celebrated. It's not something to be talked about lightly. This is a, this is a problem in the country today and in our country today. And until we start treating each other like human beings instead of feral animals that run in separate packs, decide to hate each other because he said, she said, so-and-so, so-and-so. At one time, this country was a united front. We were, it, was, it would be akin to brothers and sisters, always fighting with each other, beating each other up. But you know what? As soon as somebody on the outside picked on any one of the siblings, well, now you're going to fight all of us. Because, yeah, I may be able to do that, but you're not allowed to do that. That's what, that's what this country used to be like. It was Democrat, Republican, Independent, Liberal, Conservative, whatever. Yeah, we had our internal disagreements and our dialogues and disagreements about the way things that should be done. And I encourage those of you that haven't read the Constitution and the Federalist Papers associated with it to go do that because you understand that that's necessary. Our government is designed to run inefficiently to keep it from becoming a tyrannical, oppressive government. It's designed to have different opinions and different sides. But the one thing it's designed also to do is those different opinions and sides can come together and present a united front to the world and to the protection of its citizens. Not this vitriol and hatred where if you don't disagree with me and your politics are different than mine, then I'm just going to shut you down and wish you were dead and celebrate the fact that somebody tried to do that. That's not okay. I, my politics are what they are. But whether it's my guy, whether it's the opposition, whether it's somebody else, I don't wish death, unalive, whatever you have to say, on anybody. That's not okay. And to think that way is a derangement that, and I don't care which side you're on, it doesn't matter. There shouldn't be that level of vitriol or hatred in your heart at all. You wouldn't wish your own family dead. Why would you wish somebody else? Why would you wish somebody else's father? somebody else's mother, somebody else's parent. Say what you will, hold your opinion, but don't let it turn you into hate. Don't let it divide you. Don't let it destroy relationships. I saw a meme or a quote somewhere last week. It said, don't let the opinions of two people who don't even know your name cost you friendships and cost you relationships. It's not worth it. Your opinion is what it is. We have the power to vote in this country, and whether or not you believe that's something that still matters, well, it is. But we have the ability to express those feelings. We can talk about those feelings. But again, it's been such a taboo subject for so long, people don't even know how to talk about politics and disagree without getting mad at each other and having the famous fights at Thanksgiving dinner or fights at Christmas dinner with the crazy liberal uncle or the crazy conservative uncle or whoever it happens to be. Find a way to move past this. Find a way to move past this and understand that our country is in real trouble because there are forces that act on us from the outside. Whether you believe that or not, all you have to do is go look at the data and what's really going on and see that we are under attack on every day, but we're also in real trouble because we are divided as a country and as a people because we have decided that it's more important to hate somebody that disagrees with us than to protect our children and our families from outside influences. We have to do better. We have to find a way to overcome this. We have to start having these discussions without hating each other. And that starts by standing up and saying, 
simple things, finding something you can agree on. I think we can all agree that trying to shoot somebody because you disagree with their opinion is wrong. And if you can't agree with that, then you are the problem. I don't have a follow-up for that. I don't have any great wisdom and insight. If you think it's okay to take somebody else's life because their opinion doesn't match yours, you have some issues you need to work out. That's just that simple. If you think it's okay to disagree with somebody to the point where you don't want to ever associate with them and delete them because their opinion is different than yours and they won't come around to your way of thinking, that's not okay either. That will never lead to finding a path forward together, ever. And in the midst of all this, our children are watching. Our children and our young people are watching us. Those of us that are our age, those of us that are younger, they're trying to figure it out. They're confused. Well, you know what? Young children have necessarily by default, because they haven't lived as long, a lack of experience. I'm talking about young men, young adults, young women. They don't know how to deal with this because the only thing they've ever been told is don't talk about it. Yet it affects them in every way. So your children are watching. Now, whether they're young, they're impacted by that because they feel the raw emotion inside of you. And if they're teenagers, if they're younger children, you need to be talking with your family about this and about how this works and about what your opinions are and why you believe the way you believe. And if you can't state why you believe the way you believe other than I believe this way because I don't like the other side. That's not a good opinion, and that's not a good way to form an opinion. Learn to talk about this, because the young people are talking about this, and they're famously arriving at wrong conclusions because they don't have the skills to actually have a viable conversation or to even know when the information that they have is correct. And there's a lot of young people out there that are very smart, that are researched, that are well-informed, and they too are having problems with their peers listening to them and are being ostracized and alienated because they understand what's going on. And no matter which conclusion you arrive at, it doesn't matter. As long as you know how you got there, that's the important thing. Folks, you got to talk to each other about this. You got to find a way to bridge this gap and understand that we are all shaken by this particular event from this weekend. We are all scared. Now, how we arrive at that and what we're afraid of, they may be very different things. I am scared that this is going to further polarize the country and separate us even further. It looks like on the surface it may be uniting a lot of people, but that may just be what they want to show us as well. The only way to truly find out is actually start having conversations with people and talking about this. Stating your opinion and not ostracizing somebody because they believe differently than you. Only caveat I'm going to give you to that is that if you believe that it's okay to hurt somebody because they disagree with you, then you may not get to talk to me anymore about it because that's just on a fundamental human being level. That's wrong. I hope this helps, guys. I hope this helps you process it. I don't want to lead with negativity ever, but if we don't address these issues internally, then we will crumble and we will fall. We have to find a way to start getting along with each other, quibble and fight as we may internally we have to stand together and united as a country i love you guys and those of you that agree with me disagree with me post in the comments send me some messages let me know what you think if there's anything else you want me to talk about questions you want me to answer i will be happy to do so if you want links to the book for the federalist papers and or a free copy of the constitution which is very much available out there we'll post some in the show notes i love y'all till next week peace